Hi everyone, my name is Faith Motegi and this is my platform, Parenting Conundrums. Today's topic or today's um, conundrum that I would hope I can help you with is getting a gift for your children or for the children in your life. Now, I know it's already December, but one of the things that I've learned over time is to be shopping for December across the months. I know I'm sharing it now, <laughs> but I have realized that just pay attention to what your child likes or the, the children in your life like over the year, over the months. So it might be their favorite snack, it could be their favorite toy, it could be their favorite book, it could be their favorite experience or what do you call it? Whatever it is, there's something that your child or the children in your life have have cherished they wanted more of it over and over again so so as not to have what do you call it tooth decay and and what and stomach upsets by giving it all to them at once if they had a favorite snack why not buy like designate designate um it's a cabinet i don't know how you'll hide it ah! Because one thing for sure that we know is that children always find the things that we think are well hidden. So it's dedicate a corner or a, a closet or a carton somewhere within your house or you'll find a way. It can even be in the office and then periodically you fill it up. But by the time you see mm, this would be interesting or this this is something that they have loved over over the months you can buy double what they eat now there and then it's for the birthday party or and hmm, what can be as a christmas present so the idea is you do not meet you you do not get hit by the financial crunch or the financial uh, indecision that captures us over the festive season so one idea is if it's your favorite if it's a child's favorite snack or experience maybe they went somewhere you can have either a ticket or a voucher or something of the sort now my favorite part <laughs> is books is it possible to have nicely wrapped books i know it may not always be like oh that all or aspiring inspiring um, moment but why not include books it could be with the christmas season it could be whatever it is but include books as their presents and i always put this uh, also as a birthday if your child is turning eight why not have either eight books as a present or half the number four books and they can choose it for themselves or depending on what, if it's a series, you can go buy them in advance and then ensure that they have them as their presents. So you have what their favorite snacks or their favorite moments or what experiences during the year. And then you stock it up over the years. Number two, buy the books. If it is 24, there are some traditions where they have uh, the 24. It's like a countdown to Christmas. So you start opening or you read that particular book on the 1st of December and then the 2nd all the way and then you have your final one or not so final one on the 25th of December. So it could be Christmas themed, it could be generally or you just find a pattern depending on your child and their interests. So they can read it for themselves or you can read it for them. And then the other aspect is why not involve your children, ask them ask them what would they like the thing about celebrations and i've noticed this with children who especially boys who when they hit double digit that means when they hit 10 it's like <clears throat> i am the adult but who will tell them ha adulting is hard anyway on a light note by the time you where was i with the, during the commercial break by the time the child turns uh, turns 10 yes double digit Usually, the birthday party changes. They, they, some of them become specific in, they don't just want everybody to show up. They want to have specific friends. Even the type of cake changes or the experience. They don't just want a birthday party. Maybe they want to go out. Now, when it comes to Christmas, I know you can ask because it's, we are still early in the season. Find out from them, especially in this season, that things are different. 
what would make you have a fantastic Christmas? Now, if it involves spending, if it involves finances, children start learning financial literal, literacy skills <laughs> and learn self-control and being patient from these small experiences. So if they want to go out, they want to have a specific treat, they want to make it themselves, all that. Because another thing is, remember, it is you as a parent either trying to relieve or re-experience your own version of their best festive season and there's a child who may have their own idea of what they would want to do. So why not have a conversation? I always talk about family conversations. Have a family meeting. And if, if it's not possible, let them know why it's not possible. If it needs to be scheduled out, then you learn about planning. You are having a conversation of Christmas doesn't just show up. The food before you doesn't just miraculously happen. You learn how to make that pie, that gingerbread house, those cookies. Yes, the number of movies we have watched that involve gingerbread houses, that involve cookies, but most of the time, there might be chapati, there might be mokimo, and yes, it's delightful, but there could be a child who wants to make some gingerbread cookies, some cookies, some Christmas tree. So maybe they want to buy the cookie cutter, and they make the dough, and they make that, and it doesn't have to be like Pinterest, radio, camera, Instagram worthy, but they want to decorate. So what am I saying here? Involve the child. You have your own plans, yes. But another thing that I'm realizing, especially in the Kenyan context, is they are closing school and then soon after, they are going back to school. Yes, they will have that holiday season, but the school calendar starts so fast. So you may not be having the extended holiday season depending on the school system that a child goes to. So how do you still enjoy the moment? There could be, yes, they have watched the movies. We are being influenced left, right, and center. So let's not ignore that. They could want to just sleep in a little bit late. They could want to make a, a, a what? How is it called? Like you just lay out the, the, the um, what do you call it? The mattress onto the floor. Or you use the sofa cushions. And then you just have like whatever the case. But have you ever asked your child what would make your Christmas as delightful as possible? So that for now, as I keep it short and brief, is let it be a little bit different. Yes, this is on. If you're able to do what you can, please don't stretch yourself to fit certain, to hit certain notches and maybe you'll be financially unsettled and crying all over in January. And you can pass this lesson over to the children that yes, the whole world might be doing A, B, C, and D, but it doesn't have to be the case every single time. And we can have a Merry little Christmas right here. So I'm hoping that these tips will help whether in this season or in the coming days. Ah, and so that I don't forget. Um, there's a financial tip that I learned and I would like to pass it on to you. Christmas or any, you are, okay, birthdays and Christmas. Put in some anniversaries, but mainly birthdays and Christmas. They... Don't happen by accident. You know what date that birthday is showing up. You know what date Christmas is showing up. So are you saving up for Christmas? Are you saving up for the birthdays? So the tip that I learned was right now, you should be spending the money that you've been saving up since last Christmas. I know. Mm -hmm. So Sahi, now... Look at it that almost every time, around this time, you're like, oh, that decoration, oh, that experience. And the advertisements are there left, right, and center. The experiences you want to explore, you want to eat, you want to see. But they cost money. So you have a target. Like right now, by the time you experience this, put aside what average amount you use during these festivities what are these experiences and how much do they cost and then you save you split it according to the months whether it is going to be the 12 months or 11 months but you save up for christmas somewhere where you don't touch 
and it stays there for the entire year and then now when all the um, shamra shamras are showing up you're like this deal there's a sale there's a you're like hmm, but the money then you'll be like spending money but it is for the right purpose okay so how do you do that you do that as an individual and you can also let the child know and it applies also for the birthday can you save up for your birthday can you save up for christmas so yes it's a parenting conundrum on your part but it's an opportunity to pass on a lifelong lesson so as we wait for the festivities to fully kick in some of us uh, have exams but uh, the mood is there. Put on some Christmas songs. Ah, that's an idea. What are their favorite? Like, can you, is it curating your own personal um, playlist of music or movies to want? Like your top 10, top 24, whatever the case. Like, it doesn't have to cost much, but it is a memory that lasts a lifetime. Because like for me, the memory that lasts a lifetime is that once upon a time, we used to put cotton wool on the tree that has been on a branch it wasn't even a tree it was a branch that has been put what put in a bucket something of this sort like in umeka cotton wool to resemble snow to represent snow what was your christmas tradition <laughs> i would like to know meanwhile subscribe share and enjoy release the stress by making it more practical and not too expensive Yes, I'll see you soon on another video on maybe a related topic or something different concerning parenting conundrums. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye-bye.